Hello and welcome. We're going to solve four examples about mesh current analysis method. And to analyze any circuit using the mesh method, we need to apply three steps. Number one, define each mesh current. We shall always define mesh currents clockwise for convenience. Two, apply Kirchhoff's voltage law or KVL around each mesh and from that we are going to get a system of linear equations. 3. Solve the resulting linear system of equations to get the mesh currents. Example 1. Find the mesh currents in the circuit shown. First of all we are going to define the mesh currents I1 and I2. And the direction of each mesh current is clockwise. Now we are going to apply KVL in each loop. We are going to write the equation 1 or mesh 1. Kirchhoff's voltage law states that the sum of voltages in a closed loop is equal to 0. We can start from any point in the loop. We are going to start from this point. Each voltage source has two signs, minus and plus. We are going to use the second sign, always, to be written in the equation. So we can see that the second sign is a plus, because we started from here. So this is the first, this is the second. So we write plus V1. Minus R1 multiplied by I1. Minus R1, I1. We are going to say minus to all resistors because they consume energy. Minus V2, the second sign is minus, so minus V2. Minus R2 multiplied by I1 minus I2. Because both I1 and I2 contribute in the current flowing in R2. So we say R2 multiplied by I1 minus I2 is equal to 0. Now to write the second equation or mesh, we will start from this point and again V2 minus R3 multiplied by I2 minus V3 minus R4 multiplied by I2 minus R2 multiplied by I2 minus I1. So we can notice that in this loop we say I2 minus I1 whereas in this loop we said I1 minus I2. By using the numbers given here in these equations and rearranging the equations, we get these two equations. And by solving these two equations, we get the mesh currents I1 and I2. Example 2. Find the mesh currents in the circuit shown. First of all, we are going to define the mesh currents I1, I2 and I3. Now we apply KVL in each loop. Let's start from this point and we say V1 minus R1 multiplied by I1 minus I3 minus R2 multiplied by I1 minus I2 is equal to 0. Now let's write the equation for mesh 2. Let's start from this point. R2 multiplied by I2 minus I1 and the sign is minus because it's a resistor. Minus R3 multiplied by I2 minus I3 
plus v2 equals 0. And now i3 and for this loop we are going to start from this point r1 multiplied by i3 minus i1 and the sign is minus again minus r4 multiplied by i3 minus r3 multiplied by i3 minus i2 by using these numbers again and these equations and rearranging the equations we get the system of equations by solving these three equations we get i1 i2 and i3 Example 3. Find mesh currents in the circuit shown. This example is similar to the previous example. However, in this loop we have a current source with a value i. So, we can directly say i1 equals to i. For the second and third equations, we are going to follow KVL as we did in the last example. We already have the value of I, which is 0 0.5 ampere, and we have the values of R1 and R2, R3 and R4, and V as well. So we can simply substitute these values and get only two equations, because I1 is already 0 0.5. And by solving these two equations, we get I2 and I3. Example 4. We're going to follow the same procedure in this example. So first of all, we define the mesh currents I1 and I2. And then we're going to write the equations. Here we have the current source between I1 and I2. So the equation will be I1 minus I2 is equal to 1 ampere, which is the value of the current source. The direction of the current I1 is the same as the direction of the current source whereas the direction of the current I2 is opposite to the direction of the current source and that's why we give I1 positive sign and I2 a negative sign so I1 minus I2 is equal to 1 and this is one of the equations now we are going to apply KVL in this loop and we have 10 minus 5i1 minus vx is equal to 0. vx is just a variable to represent the voltage of the current source. Now let's write the equation for i2. We're going to start from this point and we write Vx minus 2i2 minus 4i2 is equal to 0. Now we have three unknowns, i1, i2, and Vx. And we have three equations, 1, 2, and 3, so we can find the solution. We can solve these equations by rearranging this equation, mesh1, in this way, and substitute Vx in the equation mesh2. So Vx equals 10 minus 5i1 will be placed here. To get this equation, the new equation, we call it 1. And we have this equation 2, which is already here. So we have two equations with two unknowns, i1 and i2. We can simply solve them to get i1 and i2. And once we get i1, we can put it in this equation to get vx. We can solve the same example in another method using the super mesh.
This equation is obtained in the same way as we did in the previous method. Now, if we want to solve the problem using the super mesh, first of all, we need to eliminate this branch. And now, we are going to define the super mesh, which is this red line. To write the equation of the super mesh, we need to apply KVL around the red loop. And this is the equation that we obtained. 10 minus 5 I1 minus 2 I2 minus 4 I2 is equal to 0. And by rearranging the equation, we get equation 1. Equation 2 is this one. We can see that these two equations are the same equations that we had in the previous method. And by solving these two equations, we get the answer. Thank you very much.